February, March, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. I'm sorry, did that seem like a long amount of time? Well, imagine each one of those months taking 30 days and having to live through it while waiting for something that you really, really want. I have a PC that can easily handle Stardew Valley, but you see, the thing is, if I can play a video game on a console, that's what I much, much rather prefer. So, I, I, you know, Stardew Valley came out February of last year. You know, but, but I didn't really hear about it initially. I didn't hear about it until, you know, Pro Jared and Space Hamster made their videos, and I watched them like, that looks like a fun game. You know, I absolutely love Harvest Moon, so this game right up my alley. So I went online before I picked it up, and I'm like, oh, it, it looks like a port is coming to the Xbox One, the PlayStation 4, and the Wii U. Ah, awesome, awesome. Okay, I'll just wait a little longer. It's for, for the perfect experience. Well, time dragged on. Went on for a long time. There was no, there wasn't even a release date. But in October, there finally was a release date given. December 21st. That's so close. Awesome! So I was waiting. I was getting excited. And then, December 14th. Disaster. Tragedy struck! There, they, we got a little announcement. Hey, it turns out that the only person who even owns a Wii U is uh, Chet, so screw it! No. I, 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 I waited so long. How, how could you do this to me? But we do plan to bring it to the Switch. The, the Switch? Oh, well, that's only February. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll wait just a little bit longer. So we went and it finally got to February and uh, it was not a launch title. But they did give us the quarter. Quarter two, summer. Well, summer's just around the corner. Okay, I'll wait just a little bit longer. Well, summer came. Well, it turns out that summer is three months long. And guess what? It didn't come out in summer. The final day of summer, I, I, I was at the end of the rope. Should I, should I just get it on Steam? I just, wa I just want to play the game. But finally, the announcement came. Harvest Moon of 2017, October 5th. The game is coming out. I got this news on October 1st. I'll be playing the game soon. Well, I gotta say. Was it worth the wait? Well, I got to play it for uh, 27 hours before I started this review, so uh, here's my adventure with Stardew Valley. I, I got, I've got to stop recording. I will just keep playing. So we start out on our journey, Grandpa dies and I inherit his farm. And since this is version 1.2 of Stardew Valley, I can choose the monster farm. Day one on the monster farm. Robin and Lewis creep me into the town and I plant some parsnips, but later on in the night, some spooky slime things try to kill me. Day two on the monster farm. I got a letter from Willie and he wants to give me a fishing rod. So I head on over to the beach and get the rod. And I've gotta say, this is probably one of my favorite fishing mini games in any game. Now at first I hated it. I could not get the swing of it. However, once I started to understand how it worked, it was one of my favorite things to do in the game. And at the end of recording, my highest skill was fishing at level 9. Okay, so one of the early choices I need to make in this game is who I'm going to marry. And much like with Harvest Moon, I chose who I was going to marry before I even played the game. But this time it was not based on looks. You see, I've had the Stardew Valley soundtrack for the better part of a year and I find two of the songs absolutely captivating. One of the songs is Pleasant Memory, Penny's Theme. My favorite thing about this song is it sounds like my favorite genre of music, a 50s song. Just, just ch check this out. The words from the song Earth Angel fit perfectly in this song.
And another captivating song was the song Stargazer, Maru's theme. This song is absolutely beautiful, and if there's any chance that I can gaze at some stars with a girl while listening to this song, I have got to leave at that chance. So Maru's my main target, and at this point I did have a helpful little list of things that she likes. One of those things just happens to be strawberries. And although I can't buy any seeds for the strawberries, there is one thing that I can buy. The coolest pig who ever lived comes to town every Friday and Saturday. Look at him, he's so cool! Sunglasses and a fez? Will I ever reach such levels of awesomeness? No. Anyway, we know that this pig is running this operation, and for only $500, his servant hooked me up with a strawberry. And it actually really helped with Maru, getting me high enough with her heart levels to get the first heart event. In this event, Maru is helping her father Demetrius with some science! She needs to take a step out to grab a soil sample real quick, but in that short amount of time, Demetrius makes some vague threats about people who try and get close with his little girl. However, I didn't have enough hearts by the time the Flower Bud Festival rolled around to actually dance with her. Too real. <laughs> okay, but back to the main game. Pretty early on, I got access to the mines, and when I entered for the first time, a grizzled old war veteran told me it was dangerous to go into the mines alone. So he gave me a sword so I could shank all of the monsters. This is actually a very important item to me because, you know, I live on the monster farm. And let me say that mining in this game is so dang good compared to Harvest Moon. In Harvest Moon, you might go into the mines whenever you need resources, but that's about it. Time doesn't move when you're in the mines, you can't really make any substantial progress. But in Stardew Valley, there's an elevator. Every five floors, you can save your progress and come back later. Also, every single floor is different. In Harvest Moon, you would only get a square room. And if you were really lucky, you'd get a really big square room. But in Stardew Valley, you've got winding caverns expansive cave systems, and frost-covered dungeons. Of course, while we're here in the frosty dungeon, can I just ask, am I the only one who thinks that this song sounds like the love song from Asagao Academy? So fishing, mining, what else does this game excel in? Oh, the festivals! They are also fantastic! So in Harvest Moon, yeah, you had festivals as well, but you also have them in Stardew Valley. But the festivals here blow Harvest Moon out of the water because, well, you actually do stuff in the festivals! Well, except the Flower Dance Festival. For that festival, you know, all I was doing was having an emotional breakdown. But the Egg Festival was great! Not only was I able to get my mitts on some strawberry seeds, but there was also an Easter egg hunt! 30 seconds to beat, scratch, and claw the eggs out of the hands of children for the promise of a hat. However, Abigail was too swift to be defeated. But next year, Abby, you better watch your back. I won't be attacking Jazz and Vincent. But yes, every single festival has a fun amount of interactivity. So when it comes to Harvest Moon, it's improved on everything. But you know what? There's something unique about this game. The Community Center. Now this is a huge part of Stardew Valley that I don't really see any direct comparisons to the Harvest Moon games with. There are tons of items in this game, and the community center encourages you to collect all these items by having these little packets to complete. Like all the stuff that you can forge in spring, all the stuff you can grow in summer, all of the fish you can catch in the ocean, ten thousand... ten thousand dollars. Oh, I see your play, you dirty little scam artist. Well, spring came to an end on the 28th, and I don't even know why I'm mentioning this, because it's honestly, it's so obvious, but if you go to the playground at exactly 12 p.m. and tap a bush behind the swing set, you can get yourself a free Jamino plush. Also, another completely normal thing that I don't even know why I'm mentioning it, if you catch yourself a super cucumber from the ocean and then go over to this box and offer it to the box, you'll get a... I don't even know how to pronounce that. Yeah, I had a lot of help from my chat. Sekro gave me some helpful early on tips. Isaiah answered any questions that I may have had. And Nauseous? He was on Worm Watch. While I was playing the game, he intently watched the ground for any worms. And then he'd tell me where they were. Then I'd go back, dig them up, and get the prizes. Sometimes they were secret books, and sometimes they were just, you know, play. 
Anyway, midway through summer, Maru had her birthday, and I had some strawberries. And let me tell you something. If you give someone their favorite thing on their birthday, it is a good idea. Because her hearts shot up by three. Three hearts for one gift. Holy cow! At this point, I had enough hearts for the cutscene with the Stargazer song, and it was really sweet. And I gotta say, I really do love how much thought was put into Maru. Her song is called Stargazer, and she has star wallpaper in her room. She also likes to work on robots. One of the heart events, I actually zapped my hand on one of her robots because of a wiring malfunction. And on another one of her heart events, I visited her at the clinic. Oh yeah, she works at the clinic, and all I have to say to that is... Hello, nurse. But by the 17th, I had gotten Maru up to 8 hearts, which means I could present her with a bouquet to graduate to her boyfriend. But I waited for two days, because the 19th was Demetrius' birthday. Hey buddy, I got you some mayonnaise! Also, I've got one other thing. It's Maru. This is what we call a power play, friend. And what do you know, she said yes to me! So, in the summer, I focused on getting my farm actually looking like a farm. I got myself a coop and a barn, and this is where I stored Gaboo the chicken and Bessie the cow. Raising animals in this game is much easier. They're smart enough to go inside at night, and they get friendlier faster. Also, they are immortal! Okay, if I'm gonna be 100% honest though, I think I do prefer the threat of taking care of your animals under penalty of death. Well, their death, not yours. So, in the fall, my strawberries ran out. They probably would have run out sooner, but you see, you can only give two gifts per week. So I headed into the mines, because Maru also likes gold. But while I was digging through the mines, I learned of a recipe called the Miner's Treats. Two cave carrots, one sugar, and one milk. And it just so happens to be another of Maru's favorite things. So I was able to grab that, and on the 9th of fall, I maxed out all my hearts with her. Now all I need to do is wait for a rainy day, so that the Cursed Mariner will appear and sell me the mermaid pendant. But until then, fishing, mining, and all the other fun things that this game has to offer, which includes the Stardew Festival. And this means gambling. Another tip that I was given was that on the roulette wheel to always bet on green, since there's a 75% chance of it being picked. So after a few gambles, I had enough to buy all the stuff. A fedora so I could tip it at Maru and say, my lady, and then instantly lose all 10 of my hearts with her, dried sunflowers to make my house look nice, and a blatant Hayao Miyazaki reference. And also my very first star drop. Your mind is filled with thoughts of, uh, uh, oh, oh dear. The day after the festival it rained, so I was able to get the mermaid pendant, and I got ready to propose, but it has to be romantic. If I'm proposing to the stargazer, I need to propose under the stars. So I went fishing, and I caught my very first legendary fish. I also got a treasure chest that contained a diamond, another one of Maru's favorite things. Not to mention, in Stardew Valley's culture, a mermaid pendant signifies a proposal, and in my culture, a diamond signifies a proposal. So on the 19th, I went and waited in front of Maru's house, but then I went inside real quick, but then she entered the house and ruined everything. So I quickly reset my switch, and then on the 19th, again, I waited in front of her house, and then she came home. The sun was setting, the stars were out, and then I gave her the diamond and the mermaid pendant. And what do you know? She said yes. I am so romantic. Three days later, we were married, and it was great. You see, usually in Harvest Moons, this is where most people quit, because there really isn't too much to do post-marriage. But Stardew Valley has so much going for it. You see, winter is usually a death knell, because all there is to do is fish and mine. But this game's fishing and mining are so much fun. And there's also restoring the community center! I need to find all the stuff for the artisan bundle! Ooh! Catching all of those fish would be fun! And there's also that bundle for 20 25000 dollars Yes, hello Morris! I would like one of your finest JoJo memberships, please! So that is my first 27 hours with Stardew Valley! I have waited so long to have this game on the Switch and it, it, it was worth it. I paid $60 for Harvest Moon games in the past, and uh, honestly, I would have paid $60 for this game because it blows every single one of them out of the water. If you like Harvest Moon, you better pick this game up. If you don't think you like Harvest Moon, pick it up anyway. It's only $15, and it's definitely worth the gamble. You might end up loving it, and you'll have so much fun. If you don't like it, you're only out $15. Well. I'm, I, I, I want to get back to playing it. I mean, I didn't get to go to the Stardew Valley thing and dance with Mario last year, but this year, I will. I'll see you later. Probably not in the next video, though, because, uh...
I, I, I don't think there's going to be another video. I'm, I, I'm going to be playing this. Bye.